Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our NIBS Home School. My dear students, hope you are all well by the grace of Almighty Allah. I am Shantidhar Rahman, Assistant Teacher of National Ideal English Version School. Today I will take a science class, biology class for the student of class 9 and our today's class topic is chapter 1, reading done and our today's lecture number 2. My dear students, our first chapter name is Lessons of Life. In our previous classes, we discussed the different parts of um, um, biology and different section of the biology. Now, we will discuss rest of the part. Let's start our class. <coughs> classification, our today's topic is classification of living being. About 4 million different plant species and 13 million of animal species have been named and described till today. This number is not yet final because the more and more new species are being added to it almost every day. It is assumed that the number will reach a crore in future when the description of all the organisms will be ended. A large number of organisms are needed to be grouped systematically to know, understand and learn them in an easy manner. Many years back, natural scientists feel the necessity to classify living world. For this, from this necessity, a distinct branch of biology, taxonomy had emerged. The main of classification is to know the past and diverse living world accurately and classify them quickly and easily. So, what is the aim of classification? To know the past um, from this necessity, a distinct branch of biology, taxonomy had emerged. The main aim of classification is to know the past and diverse living world accurately and classify them quickly and easily. So, still now about 4 million different plant species and 30 million of animal species have been named and described still now. Now, <coughs> who is the father of the classification? The contribution of Swedish naturalist Carolus Ninias in the field of taxonomy is worth mentioning. In <coughs> 1735, he received his doctoral degree in medicine from the University of Uppsala, and in 1741, he was appointed professor of anatomy in the same university. So, Carolus Linnaeus is called the father of classification. Now, aim of classification. The aim of classification is to acquire knowledge of the groups and subgroups of organisms to maintain uh, documentation of the accumulated information systematically, to present the knowledge cons uh, consciously and to take steps to identify the organisms and be conscious to conserve the useful organisms for the well-being of the living world. <coughs> now living world. From the time of Carolus Linnaeus up to the middle uh, of the 20th century, all living organisms were classified in one or two kingdom, um, Animalia and Plant. First, the whole kingdom is divided into two part, Animalia and Plant. Now, with the process of science on the basis of data collection from time to time, for instance, the type of DNA or RNA in a cell features a number of cells in a living body and mode of nutrition that a cell adapt. A five kingdom classification was proposed by W. H. Whittaker in 1969. So, who proposed five kingdom classification? W. H. Whittaker in 1969. W. H. Whittaker proposed five kingdom classification in 1969. Then Margulis introduced a modified and expanded um, exp uh, form of Whittaker's classification in 1974. In <coughs> 1969, W. H. Whittaker gave a five kingdom classification and 1974, uh, Margulis expanded and modified this classification. What is the classification here? Um, the living world is classified <coughs> according to the Whittaker's theory. Living world, he divided the living uh, world into two kingdoms, super kingdoms and um, super kingdom number one it's uh, mentioned prokaryota and super kingdom number two is eukaryota. Prokaryota means that means their cells are 
very ancient and their cell is not properly organized and eukaryota means their cell is properly organized <coughs> and in prokaryota we found only one kingdom uh, its name is monera and uh, um, super kingdom number two that means in eukaryota we found four kingdom kingdom number two protista kingdom number three fungi kingdom number four planti and kingdom number five animalia that means in uh, this four kingdom all uh, protista are in kingdom number two all fungi types um, species are in kingdom number three all planty types um, uh, species are in kingdom number four and all animals are in kingdom number five now we will discuss here super kingdom number one prokaryota these are primitive prokaryotic having no structure distinct nucleus and microscopic unicellular organism you know that unicellular means only one cell so prokaryota means <coughs> they have um, not uh, structured uh, nucleus well structured nucleus and they are very microscopic organism primitive and prokaryotic now uh, it's uh, kingdom number one monera characteristic they are mostly unicellular filamentous filament is constituted by vertically connected cells uh, one after um, another or colonial filament means like uh, these things <coughs> they are um, arranging one after one or colonial through uh, chromatin material is present there is no nuclear membrane or nucleolus in their cell that means in their cell there is no nuclear membrane and nucleolus no plastid mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum are there but ribosome is present in their cell there is no plastid no mitochondria no endoplasmic reticulum <coughs> but ribosome is present <coughs> the cell divides through a process of binary fission their chief mode of nutrition is absorption absorption means they take food from other uh, animals or plants through some of them produces food through photosynthesis but some plants uh, some um, uh, species from monera kingdom they can also produce their uh, food in uh, photosynthesis process <coughs> example bacteria blue green algae etc super kingdom number two eukaryota these are eukaryotic that means their nucleus is well structured unicellular only one cell or multicellular they can be uh, more than one cell and living uh, individually or in colonial form they can live in a colony that means they can um, uh, live in jointly or they can live separately now uh, kingdom number two protista characteristics they are unicellular or multicellular individual colonial or filamentous and the nuclei um, nuclei in their cells are well structured their cell contain nuclear mat uh, materials covered by a nuclear membrane that means in their nucleus there is a nuclear membrane nucleolus nucleoplasm and nuclear pore in the chromatin materials <coughs> there is dna and rna and protein in the chromatin it has dna rna and protein all types of cell organelles are present there are all types of cell organelles like mitochondria golgi body plastid endoplasmic reticulum all are present their modes of nutrition are absorption ingestion or photosynthesis they can take food by absorption from other animals plants or they can also produce their own food by themselves in the photosynthesis process they accomplish their asexual and <coughs> sexual reproduction asexual means uh, not sexual and um, uh, sexual reproduction by the process of mitosis and conjugation conjugation means union of uh, two gametes which are um, structurally similar but biologically different <coughs> so conjugation uh, process means when male organism uh, male sexual organism and <coughs> organ and uh, female organ um, uh, both um, uh, jointly um, uh, produce their uh, future generation uh, respectively no embryo is developed in them so in their case there is no embryo developed example amoeba uh, paramecium and algae <coughs> now kingdom number three fungi Titasty. most of them are terrestrial uh, saprophytic or parasitic terrestrial means they live in the um, uh, soil and saprophytic or parasitic saprophytic means they take food from the dead bodies that means dead animals or plants and parasitic means also uh, they can um, uh, take food from other animals 
their body is constructed of a single cell or mycelia narrow type uh, li like part the nucleus is well organized the cell wall is composed of chitin their mode of nutrition is absorption that means they take food from other uh, animals or plants the photosynthetic um, apparatus chloroplast is absent that means they have no chloroplast that's why they cannot take part in photosynthesis process because without chloroplast how can they um, uh, do the photosynthesis <coughs> they are reprodu uh, they reproduce by haploid spores and their cells are divided through meiotic cell division here example is yeast penicillium mushroom etc now plant, uh, kingdom number 4 planty characteristic they are photosynthetic and eukaryotic that means <coughs> they have the chlorophyll and they can produce their own food by the photosynthesis uh, synthesis process and eukaryotic that means they are <coughs> nucleus is well organized advanced tissue systems are found in them they develop embryos and deployed stages uh, starts from it they are mostly terrestrial terrestrial means that they grow in the soil <coughs> Uh, but there are also many aquatic species in this kingdom in this kingdom you also found aquatic plants <coughs> the, uh, those who born in the water their uh, sexual reproduction is in uh, any so gamas the sexual reproduces which is happened by union of structurally and physically different gametes they are uh, archaeogonates plants with female reproduces organs and flowering plants example advanced green plants division of the planty are shown in a character planty moss fern gymnosperm and angiosperm so in this planty we can found moss fern gymnosperm and angiosperm now kingdom number 5 animalia <coughs> characteristic they are eukaryotic and multicellular organism eukaryotic means their nucleus is well organized and multicellular means they have more cell, uh, cell. <coughs> their cells do not have non-living cell walls plastids or vacuole in them that means their cell have no plastid no vacuole and cell wall we know that um, vacuole and uh, cell wall and uh, plastid are present only in the plant cell <coughs> As there is no plastid in their cells, they are <coughs> heterotrophs, and so they depend on other organisms for their food. After ingest, um, ingestion, they digest their food. They have advanced and complex tissue systems. Sexual reproduction is their usual way of reproduction. Haploid gametes are usually produced in the reproduces organs of the mature and diploid males and females. Embryonic layers are developed at the time of their embryonic development. But <coughs> so. In animals, they are uh, plastid, vacuole, and cell wall are absent. They have no chlorophyll, that's why they cannot <coughs> uh, produce their own food by themselves. They digest food. They have advanced and complex tissue because <coughs> they have uh, different body parts and their tissues are very uh, developed um, and they are reproduced by the sexual way um, and haploid gametes are usually produced in the reprodu um, reproduction organs of the mature diploid male and female and <coughs> they are uh, develop embryo and embryonic layers also develop because their um, child grow in the womb of a mother. <coughs> Now example the entire invertebrate and vertebrate animals except protozoan. Except protozoan all the vertical invertebrate and vertebrate animals are example of this animal here. Now uh, <coughs> the, um, different steps of the classification. In classifying the organism codified units or ranks are used in taxonomy it is the which is called taxa. That means for the classification of the organism we you, you, uh, use a rank some different ranks in uh, totally they are in, uh, in general they are called taxonomy but in single form they are called taxa. <coughs> the largest classification rank is kingdom the first and the largest classification rank is kingdom and the smallest classification rank is the species each rank of taxonomy adds new characteristic to, to those of the lower rank the higher the rank the lower the number of the characteristic that means <coughs> in a species there will be more characteristic but when it is going to the kingdoms their characteristic will be lower 
the higher the rank the lower the number of the characteristic and the higher number of living organisms belonging to this rank the lower the rank the higher number of characteristic and the number of living being belonging to this rank there are seven main taxonomic ranks according to the international code so how many uh, <coughs> taxonomic rank according to the international code it is very important there are seven uh, main taxonomic ranks according to the international kingdom which are they they are kingdom phylum class order family genus and species when you write in your exam paper that means um, how many main how many rank in a taxonomy so <coughs> you have to write them kingdom phylum class order family genus and species and you have to maintain the style of this writing you should maintain this style because this is the appropriate style to write the rank of the taxonomy if you write um, uh, according like this it is not correct so when you write the uh, rank of the taxonomy you will write in this process it is very important for you now my dear students in your um, this chapter <coughs> there are some binomial names of the some organism, general names and scientific names. There are uh, some names of the um, orga organisms we re read here: rice, origa, sativa, origa, sativa, jute, corcoras capsularis. Jute, scientific name: corcoras capsularis. Mango, mangifera indica. Jackfruit, Artocarpus heterophyllus. Water lily. Nymphia nautili, China rose, hibiscus rosa sinensis, casual organism of cholera, vibrio cholerae, casual organism of malaria, plasmodium vivax, cockroach, periplaneta americana, ilisha, ilish, hilsha, hilsha, uh, sorry, honeybee, apis indica, ilisha, tenulosa ilisha, Asian toad, uh, dutta firenas, Melatonias, uh, Babufo Melanostictus, Oriental uh, Magpie Robin, Copsychus Solaris, Tiger Panthera Tigris, Human Homo sapiens. Here is the name of some um, organisms and their scientific name. Your homework is to uh, you will memorize this name at your home and also write in your HW copy. This is your first homework <coughs> for the next week. Homework number one scientific name page number 13 page number 13 <coughs> you will memorize these na scientific names and also uh, write in your homework copy when you write the scientific name like uh, <coughs> human when you write scientific name that means human uh, <coughs> homo sapiens you must underline them when you write in your hw copy you must underline them homo sapiens there are two parts my dear students i hope you understand today's class uh, you will do your homework properly and submit it on saturday from 9 am to 3 pm till then keep well assalamu alaikum